How did I do? You think I could be a Pulse model? <laughs> Maybe in another lifetime. Well, today we're going to find out all about Pulse's international modeling agency. We'll take a look at the business of modeling and how it's been impacted by the pandemic. It's not what you may think. Ramey Gordon went from International Pulse model to the company's Managing Director of Fashion and Lifestyle. We discussed everything from fashion in a time of COVID to what it takes to become a supermodel. I'm sorry. Let me ask you the standard question. What are you wearing? Well, I'm wearing Pulse, naturally. <laughs> yes. And I'm wearing Robert Young, the cloth. This is a nice vintage piece that I've had for years. And I go back to my wardrobe each and every time when I need to make a big blue fashion statement. Lovely. I love Robert Young. He's brilliant from Trinidad. And we're sitting in front of Pulse's Fashion and Beauty Hall of Fame. And there you are, right there, yes, May Gordon indeed. 2001. <laughs> Little young thing. I know. <laughs> Bring back those days, and please. And now you're the boss. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. The journey has been incredible. I've learned so much along the way, being in front of the camera and now being behind the scenes, directing and helping to groom young models and to develop careers. It's been fascinating as well as highly enriching. It's been an interesting year in fashion, hasn't it? So yeah. we've been living through the pandemic, yes. But another thing that has also impacted the past 12 months is the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. in the United States, also in Europe to a lesser extent as well. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted Pulse's fashion uh, side of the industry? Well, it's Im impacted us in a big way, obviously, being purveyors of exceptional modeling talent from all the way back um, when our chairman started Pulse and you know, gave people the idea that uh, they could leave Jamaica, work on the global stage, we have always been at the forefront of several different waves of black beauty being celebrated and getting into the far reaches on the high levels of fashion. And this time is no exception. I mean, we've had that history in the past where we had people like Nadine Willis and Janelle McKenzie leading an ascendancy of black models well before it was en vogue to, to do that. And so we're really proud of that tradition. You also had a period where you had Janelle Williams and Sadine Blake mm -hmm. leading that ascendancy at a different time, mm -hmm. getting covers of Vogue. And then you have the Alicia Burks of this world, who is a cover of Italian Vogue and cover of Elle and is doing exceptionally well among the top 40 models earning-wise in the world. And so right now we're ready and poised to capitalize on this Black Lives Matter movement where we're grooming talent, ready for the market, and the girls that are already in the market are taking huge advantage of the demand for beautiful black models. And we're very proud of our place in that part of the landscape in terms of pushing and elevating black beauty because it's part of our DNA, really. You know, traditionally, black models have fought to be seen, to be recognized, to get those covers, to even book jobs. Have you noticed the difference in the demand now? Has it become easier for black women to book those jobs? We've made steps. We've made huge strides. And I think the movement has, has helped in a significant way. I, I think, too, that people have had to recognize that black people have purchasing power, too. Mm -hmm. And we want to see ourselves right. in these campaigns, these catalogs. I mean, on the runway, yes, traditionally, they've always gone for girls, black girls, because they feel like we have the rhythm and we can walk well and so on. But um, we do have the purchasing power, and therefore, we want to see ourselves selling to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so you have to put the black models in those um, spaces to appeal to, um, to people. I mean, Rihanna's line, for example, she had so many shades. Far to shades. Right, beauty. because she understood. Game changing. Totally. And then you find that the other makeup brands were sort of following suit right <laughs> yes, after. Yes. But it, All it, of a sudden, they realized that there are more than one shade of people. Listen, and it took that to, to, to make that sort of seismic change, and it impacted their bottom line, too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that it, it almost is like a no-brainer that we needed to be in the space long ahead of time when the powers that be decided that we need to be in that space. But... It's one of the things that I, I really appreciate and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for at Pulse and 
for our realization that we are not secondary. We, when we get through the door, we want to be at the top. We want our girls to see the best clients. We want them to get the best jobs. We want to be affiliated with the best agencies. And I think that it's such a great thing to sort of imbue in young people coming up to make them realize that they have a seat at the table too. Yeah. The fashion scene has long lacked representation, but agencies like Pulse have created a shift in the industry, increasing opportunities for black models. Back in the day, pre maybe Naomi Campbell, where you have the one black girl in a campaign. I mean, Loy Samuels kind of made that breakthrough from us at Pulse where she had started, things were slow in the initial um, phases, and then she made that big breakthrough with the Calvin Klein campaign, and she was the sole black girl in that campaign. Nowadays, you see black models fronting tons of campaign. Alicia Burke is a beautiful face for Laura Mercier. Janelle is fronting Tom Ford's campaign for beauty. And it's just brilliant that we have been able to break out of that one token black girl mm -hmm. into sort of where we need to be because again we buy makeup we buy clothes you know we're a part of this whole fashion industry beyond just seeing a one girl here or one guy there but do you think that this focus on black beauty now is going to last or is it a trend or a fad for the fashion industry because we've seen waves before where the black girls are in and then all of a sudden they aren't in again. I think this time it's different. We are going to make sure that it is consistent and it remains so um, because it's been a long time in coming mm -hmm. and it has been necessary for longer than we're getting the space for at this moment. So I think with the, you know, just the whole political movement with the whole social justice movement with George Floyd. I think we're digging in a little bit more and realizing that in order for us to really maintain the levels, you have to consistently advocate, you have to consistently say, hey, we need to be in this space as well. And I think people like Beth and Hardison and those um, women before have advocated over the years. And, you know, now we have to be new advocates for, for maintaining our position in the business. COVID may have put a pause on many things, but Pulse has capitalized on the opportunity to discover new talent. We continue to push with our model searches in the schools. Um, we will be expanding our footprint in these um, areas in North America. Uh, in Europe, the big diaspora areas um, to, to expand our, our talent pool um, to bring those people to the market. And there is a, an easier route for the people in the diaspora because, you know, as far as visas and mm -hmm. restrictions of that nature, you know, there won't be many of those so that they can go directly into the market and start working. So we're very um, optimistic. We're very feeling very strong about what we have on tap now. Um, in terms of the models and also the models who are in the market now working as well. The look, the height and body type are only first steps in a successful modeling career. To grace the covers of international magazines and rock the catwalk requires a good attitude and an investment in training. You really have to have an ABC approach to the whole idea of becoming a successful model. You have to have the right attitude. You obviously have to believe in yourself and your abilities. You have to be confident and you have to be disciplined mm -hmm. in terms of doing the required work to make yourself into somebody that's just not among the lot in terms but of being Pulse, a model. you don't just find them, you also train them. Oh yeah, that's a big part of our um, responsibility as agents. When we discover people in the schools and so on, we bring them in for training and it's pretty intense from the runway walking to just how to wear your hair, how to apply makeup, how to look after your health and your wellness. So it is a whole 360 process before the models um, go on to the international stage to work. And so by that time, you know, they're ready. We encourage them to stay in school at least through their high school diploma. Um, and so that when they get to the international space, they're a little bit more grounded and, mm -hmm. and so on. And thankfully, too, there's a market shift where that is concerned because before they used to want the girls a lot younger, 15, 16. Now, you know, they're taking them at 18, 19. They're a little bit more mature. and, That's and much better. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I never really understood those. It's a race, you see. Yeah. It's, it's competition. And so people want to know that 
they have this girl. I mean, we have a process too where we identify people from early and we groom them and train them and they finish high school and then they go off to start their international careers. And to showcase its talent, Pulse hosts Caribbean Fashion Week, its annual flagship event. However, like most big global events, CFW is on pause due to the pandemic. But Fashion Week is a big global event. People have to travel from all over the world to come to Kingston um, to participate in that event. So we really have to just wait and see how things pan out as far as restrictions go for gatherings and also travel restrictions too, because it's not just a localized event. Right. Yeah. Well, what about transitioning or pivoting the event to maybe television? Because you're also in media. Right. And well, I know that's what some of the other fashion weeks have done. We have, but we have decided that we want to have the touch and feel and right. energy of people being around. I mean, I know that a lot of the international brands have had to turn to film more. I mean, they were doing film before, but more so now because of the pandemic and restrictions in their own um, big cities around, you know, events and so on. But we've always captured our um, events to memorialize them, to, to catalog what we've done. And so that's not going to be any different. But in terms of Fashion Week as an event, I feel like we need to have the presence of the people, the energy of the designers, the behind the scenes, all of these things coming together um, it, it is so much a part of that experience that I don't think that we're going to, at this moment, you know, resort to just doing Fashion Week as a film. With its homegrown talent, Pulse has changed the game for Jamaica and the Caribbean, boasting a history of landmark achievements on the global fashion stage. Nadine Willis, in her heyday, earned the Gucci campaign, and on account of that, CNN declared that campaign as one of the campaigns that shook society and changed the world. I mean, those are sort of big-sized um, implications yeah, for a campaign huge. like that. And I mean, it was on account of the diversity. You know, they'd never seen a black woman in that role before. I mean, she had major images emblazoned all over billboards in the U.S. You were traveling and you opened the New York Times and there she was, Nadine Willis, on a full page in the New York Times. I mean, it was... And this is early 2000s. Yeah, I mean, she was sort of revolutionary in terms of the, the, the new ground that she broke. And Janelle McKenzie was right there and she eventually became the number one black model in the world. But um, yeah, you had people like Janelle Williams and also Nadine again, whom Vogue determined to be models who change, Jamaican models who changed the face of global fashion. So we've had, and recently too, I saw something on models.com where Lois Samuels and Janelle was also included among like a set of maybe five or 10 models as making huge impact on the international fashion scene. So obviously we've been doing the work and that kind of recognition is is to me well deserved for you know a, a country like Jamaica where people had never thought of, of doing something like this before. Well, so. many congratulations on that. Thank you. Thanks, Romy. Thank you. <laughs> on the next episode, we head to Pulse Center on Trafalgar Road to learn about the company's boutique hotel and commercial space rentals.